to uh, fully understand how the entire world works and how uh, the days of us being independent from the country next and the, the next after that uh, are over. Nowadays, global. The internet made that pretty clear to everybody. So you need to understand that anything that you do could cause a butterfly effect million miles away. Um, so the question, what does all this have to do with our crisis nowadays? Because all, all the above that I described is basically mentality. It's uh, not an evolution in our species. We're not expecting to have uh, bigger brains. Just our mentality, to think different, to think in a way that um, each one of us uh, can... <laughs> okay, we'll move that chair later. No. Um, okay, in a way that um, each one of us will think in a whole. It's not about I'm an inventor, I'm a mathematician, I'm a I don't know, student of literature, law, or anything. Nowadays, that's over. Nowadays, our mentality should, uh, should have uh, uh, a different perspective, that everybody interacts with everybody, that nowadays, the environment is not a constant. It's a variable. We can change it, and we can make it in a way that works for us, OK? Uh, mostly in Greece, what I think, personally, we need is, uh, is a different mentality. We are afraid to take uh, risks. We are afraid to say yes, and we're afraid to say no. Uh, we are afraid to take big decisions, and we're also afraid to take small decisions. Small steps or big steps are always basically the same if you think about it. And yet, here in Greece, we fail to um, actually surpass this obstacle. And uh, to me, that's basically a concept of mentality. Now, today, we have the honor of having two guests here who are from the entrepreneurial world, uh, both from different perspectives. To pinpoint something that's bad about entrepreneurship, and especially start in Greece, is that you come from a mentality that was pretty rigid. rigid. Uh, you don't have all the, um, uh, the images that you would have if you were living in America, let's say. And uh, this way, a lot of startups fail. Now, Failure can be good only if you expect it. So the mentality of the Greek mentality, oh, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to be successful at it, and that's it, it doesn't work. You have to be, I mean, when I started out in 2002, building my first startup, I was saying, OK, that's the first of hopefully five, right? But I was expecting it. So it didn't really matter to me. Uh, most startups that I see, they think that they have the best idea in the world, which is not the case, because whenever you're thinking of something, there's somebody else some, somewhere else in the world thinking about the same thing. And uh, it's not easy for them to grasp the idea that it's not the best idea in the world. Uh, it's probably going to fail. You're probably not good enough to do it. And uh, you have a lot to learn. <laughs> so in terms of mentality, we have a lot to learn. We have to, to, to deal with, st with our startups as an entrepreneurial effort, but also as a teaching, a learning process. So in that sense, that's what we try to do in our community, at least. It's that we talk about our, our ideas and we bounce. Uh, OK, I'm glad you said that, because in a matter of learning, uh, it's, uh, well, you talked about the state. OK, in the United States, basically, uh, people are bombarded by success stories and uh, people who try to do something different and people who try to create something. Here in Greece, uh, that's something that we don't see that often. So maybe uh, in the whole uh, learning process, there's a possibility that we can um, um, implicate it in, um, in the schools, in our schools. Maybe we should have more from uh, SKG startups talking to schools. You think that could help? You know, so that uh, we could start uh, getting educated over the whole idea of uh, entrepreneurship and its possible failures from when we are young so that when we start to actually create our own startups we should be uh, prepared uh, to face failure and try again until we, until we achieve. Do you think that's something that we could uh, you know, do? Okay, definitely it's uh, something that we, that we can uh, incorporate in our education. Even if we don't incorporate it as a 
uh, curriculum thing we can uh, incorporate in terms of, uh, let's say, workshops. But I'm going to tell you a story that uh, stayed with me for a while. Um, before I started with all this startup thing, I had a blog talking about you know uh, people that try new things and uh, experiment with new things. And I came up with a story for a, a little guy, 14 years old, in the US. His father was Greek. And uh, at some point, he went to his father at, at the age of 14 and said, uh, oh, dad, I want an iPhone, right? And his father said, you make something that you can sell to one person, and I'll get you the iPhone. I think that what we need is a societal paradigm shift so that we can educate our new generation, our upcoming generations into what it actually means to put an effort behind things. Mm -hmm. Because our educational system So you're talking about system. family, basically. Or the close environment that someone could get those, yeah, yeah, it, those it, ideas. It has to be something collaborative between mm -hmm. education and family and so on. But uh, it has to come from many different angles. Mm -hmm. So uh, that it actually is engraved in the mentality of the kid growing up. Mm -hmm. Just having a Could you name one or two things that we should uh, uh, maybe change in this mentality? Because uh, the whole point about being the new generation is to actually understand the mistakes from the previous generation and, you know, not to repeat them again. So, could you describe maybe one or two? In terms of uh, confronting them? Or exactly. Right. I think that uh, our generation has has it the worst, right? Because you don't you don't only have to change the way they perceive, let's say, my field, energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. You also have you also have to change the perceive economy, and that's a very difficult thing to do, because they're used to to very rigid economical structures that work for them, or they built them to work for them, so they don't want to change. They're risk averse. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Um, so risk, the risk aversion is one thing? The risk aversion is one thing. Okay. And I think it's the biggest uh, factor that we're facing right now. The second factor, obviously, is uh, financing. Mm -hmm. um, I think mental, mentality doesn't change. And, and the, the third thing mm -hmm. that I want to point out is uh, substance, or, or not substance, su uh, subsidizing uh, mm -hmm. work or projects or whatever. This has led to a generation of people that are waiting for money from the state or the EU in order to do something. Mm -hmm. And that's not proactive in terms of economy. So this way you're always going to come second or third. Our, ch our challenge is to convince them that if you do something proactively, the benefits are far greater than, than not risking your money in any way. I don't know your opinion about uh, women uh, startupers. Specialized in the Right. Because what well, I know, uh, people from Code Like Girl. Maybe you yes. want to state your name first so we do. I'm Eleni from Code Like Girl. Uh, I don't differentiate that much because women are like men, they just start up something. The good thing about women is that uh, uh, because they have a history imprinted on their mind of uh, having barriers, they sort of think faster into overcoming barriers. So uh, whenever I start something, I am always looking for a woman, woman to get on, on my team just because they will, see, I, I'm certain she will think faster than I do when we hit a barrier. Uh, but I don't differentiate in uh, I don't see a difference in, uh, let's say, success in terms of starting up from men and women. It just... Okay. Always stated about the capital. I'm saying again and again, the best people that they can contribute is our relatives, because you can sell to them. And I'm saying that because close to the relatives, not all of you thinking about your father's mother, and probably the grandfather, the grandmother is Kumbaros, the best man. You think about in our society, we are doing business with some social criteria, like Kubaros. Kubaros is the guy that we have chosen to be with him, so in order to have this relationship more strong enough, we are doing business together. Why? Because we trust 
him or her. So, don't uh, underestimate this kind of relationship. Because the people, they know everything, how to find solution. And I have one last comment. Do you know how many days you need in a hospital if you are in an urgent position and you go to the hospital after how many days they will accept you? Hmm? The statistics, the numbers, they say about 37 days. Do you have any idea that how many days it takes? Actually, one and a half. Why? Hmm? Because this social society we have. In your own experience, we're talking about the innovative man. How, do you, how close do you think we are to actually achieving a mental state that will um, have people thinking in a way that an innovative man should? No, to perceive the entire environment correctly. I'm going back to you. If I say, what about the idea? I say the mediocre idea is a fantastic one, not the special ones. Because I'm a big believer on the execution. The execution is the key. Mm -hmm. So what is innovation? OK, I will go back to the Greek word, kenotomia. Kenotomia means a new, temno. So that means we are doing the old one in a very different way at the edge. So you, you do the same, a bit different. Because this difference is your anchor of your business. Hmm? The guy we discussed earlier about the uh, olive oil, the lambda olive oil, it was a slight different than the other ones. We had the Mediterranean cuisine, this idea, and this guy uh, had the idea that why not in the luxury, uh, let's say, sector to introduce a luxury olive oil 10 years ago, not now. Hmm? And all the other ones, they said, no, it's not a good idea. He said, no, it's the number one olive oil, not premium one, but the luxury one. How I can do that? Is there any audience outside, any market outside? Fortunately for him, yes. Do you know the first three years how many bottles of uh, olive oil he sold in Greece? Zero. <laughs> because we know about olive oil. The best olive oil comes from our village. <laughs> village, our, <laughs> our groves. So thinking about, okay, in this market, let's say, or this society, they know about that. The other ones, they don't know. So, something about it. So it's all about how you present yourself or your product. It's not. No, it's your. It's not how you present. It's your uncle of of of, of your idea. Uh, give me one minute. Oh, of course, maybe five. Ten, ten meters uh, away in uh, in Chimiski, there is the tombs. Do you know about the Tom's? Yes. Yeah, you know about that. Do you know about Tom's coffee? Yes. yes. Okay, what is Tom's coffee? The idea is, okay, I have the community, I have the tribe. So I have the shoes. How many of the people they buy shoes every day? I don't know, one, two? And this guy says, okay, why not having the coffee way? So they have the coffee, a good cause, and say, okay, come to our uh, let's say store, and spend your time. So this way is the different angle of the business, and he's making more money from coffee than the shoes. But it is a part of the, let's say, about, uh, it's not about the idea, it's, it's about the culture of the brand. It's different and then useful. So I am different from my wife. But this is not the most important and useful for him. That's why he has chosen me. So actually, <laughs> actually, <laughs> okay. So building something means that it is different by definition. Must be different, or must be perceived as different. The second one must be useful. When it is useful for many people, you can make a living, as you say. If it is useful for million people, you are get rich. But for the living, must be useful for some. So you work for them because it's for them.
So when a guy says, I have a company, actually he has nothing. Hmm? His customer has the power of the company. Because if you don't have customers, you don't have any company. So thinking about, I am the successful guy because I have this idea and all of you, you are stupid ones, but you need it. It's not about the business anymore. It's you are fantastic one. I know that this day you must be very special. I have something for you. And please, if you do that, I will improve this day by day. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm creating a community. So I'm hard believer and strong believer about the thank you economy and the connection economy. Because at the same time, we are humans, at the same time, citizens and consumers as well, at the same time. So if you are afraid of... Mm, yes, please. Sorry, is that to do both with products and services or just products? Because you say yeah, you are an expert when it comes to products rather than you don't deal with services such as... I really... Uh, I'm 50 years old and I cannot uh, understand what is the difference between product and service, actually. In my mind, product is something that I can touch and a service is something that someone offers me without me having to... You know, it's not a phone or it's not a cup of coffee. To me, it's a... It's a consultant. It's a piece of advice. Actually, to me, is you have a need and I have to fulfill this need. How to do that? By, by product or by a process? So probably the product is the process sometimes and some other times is the product. At, but actually, behind the product is again the service. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about the wine. It's about the product itself, or it is about how to drink wine, when to drink wine, why to drink wine. So, in the product, you have to educate your customers about the differentiation of your product, but at the same time, how to enjoy that. So it's part of the product. So I cannot differentiate the product from the service. Should we think in terms of evolution in entrepreneurship uh, so that we can, uh, um, well, I would like to call it achieve greatness in, in any way. Uh, maybe you're a successful entrepreneur, maybe you're a successful person, a successful husband, or whatever. What is the, the, your closing message? What should we think leading here? Uh, by studies, I'm an agronomist, so I follow what uh, one of the great uh, cows they say, Carl uh, Darwin. They say it's not the most powerful or the most clever that they get and will survive, but, but the most adaptable to the change. Mm -hmm. Coma! I don't believe that we, we came here just to survive, we came here to thrive. Our whole universe was in a hot, dense state Then nearly 14 billion years ago, expansion started Wait, the earth began to cool, the autotrophs began to drool Neanderthals developed tools, we built a wall We built the pyramids, math, science, history Unraveling the mystery that all started with a big bang Since the dawn of man is really not that long As every galaxy was formed in less time than it takes To sing this song, a fraction of a second and the elements